as I explained you earlier in my previous video, the marginal costing and the marginal costing approach, your production cost will be valued at variable production cost only. We don't consider the fixed overhead cost here. So that will be treated as a period cost in the income statement under marginal costing approach. Okay. So let's quickly move on to the answer, the question number two, marginal costing. Okay, so let's calculate the sales, which is 20,000 units, 20,000 units times your selling price, which is 14. Okay, so that will be how much? 280,000. Now, you calculate the cost of production. Cost of production is calculated by taking into account opening stock, then the production cost less the closing stock. Okay, now let's calculate the production cost and the marginal costing. So you consider only uh, direct material, direct labor and variable production overheads. So per unit costs are given $2, $3 and 1.4. So thereby your cost will be 6.4. Then calculate the production cost, which is the question it is given 20,000 units, produced 20,000 units, and sold 20,000 units. So therefore, your variable production cost will be 20,000 times 6,428,000. 6 okay, so this is 20,000 times 6.4. So these are sales units, 20,000. Production also 20,000. So therefore there is no closing stock and your production overhead cost, the cost of sales will be 128,000. Now, what is your contribution? Here we call it contribution, sales minus closing stock which will be 152,000. And you deduct the fixed cost, which is the period cost, 92,000. Your net profit will be 60,000. Okay, so it's straightforward. Now let's move on to 2009. 2009, your sales, how much? 15,000. 18,000 produced, 15,000 sold. So therefore, your sales will be 15,000 times 14, 210. And how much is your opening stock? We didn't have any opening stock because we, in the previous period, we produced 20,000 and we sold 20,000. So therefore, there is no opening stock. How much is produced here? 18,000 times 6.4. So that will give you 115,200. Then we need to deduct the closing stock. The produce 18,000, sold 15,000. So therefore there is a closing stock of 3,000 times 6.4, which will be 19,200. So, simply you simplify this, which will be 96,000, which is cost of goods sold. And sales minus cost of goods sold, 114,000, which will be your contribution. Then you deduct your period cost, which is fixed cost, 92,000 your profit will be 22,000. 
in 2010, what is the scenario here? You produce 21,000 and sold 21,600 and also there is opening stock 3,000 as well as the closing stock also there. So opening stock simply you can take it from previous year which was 19,200 closing stock now opening stock 19,200 now the production is 21,000 okay so 21,000 times 6.4 so that will be 134,400 how much is your closing stock so closing stock will be your opening stock 3,000 produced 21,000 so therefore the total available stock 24,000 and sold 21,600 so that will be 2,400 so times 6.4 so that will give you 15,360 and thereby you can calculate your cost of goods sold 138,240. Now, how much is the contribution? Sales minus the cost of goods sold 164,160. How much is your fixed cost? 92,000 every month you need to deduct. So, thereby your profit will be 72,160. So, this will be the net profit under marginal costing approach 60,000, 22,000, and 72,160. However, we calculated the net profit under absorption costing method, we got 60,000, 35,000, 69,400. So, there is there you can see a total difference between the net profit between absorption costing and marginal costing. But in the first year, there is no difference because what is the reason? Your production was equal to sales units. So therefore, there is no difference. So what is this difference? You need to reconcile this. So that will be your third question we need to answer. Explain with supporting calculation the difference between profits reported under two approaches. Okay, so profit reconciliation. How you can do that? First, you take the difference between the net profits under absorption costing and marginal costing. Take the difference. So this is the profit reconciliation. Under profit reconciliation, take the profit difference. Simply you minus the profits. Uh, in the first year, 2008, there is no difference because your absorption costing profit is equal to marginal costing profit. There's no difference. However, there's a difference in difference in the net profit in the in 2009, which is 13,800. This is the difference between thirty-five thousand eight hundred absorption costing profit and 22,000 under marginal costing profit. So what is the difference? Why there is a difference? So the, there is a difference of 13,800. So this difference is because of the closing stock valuation. We had a closing stock of 2,400. Okay. Sorry, closing stock of 3,000 in 2009. The production was production was 18,000 and sold 
15,000. So therefore, 3,000 is the closing stock. And the valuation under both approaches will be different. Under absorption costing, we valued at 11, the full cost. Whereas marginal costing, we valued at uh, 6.4. Okay. So what is the difference here? So the main difference is the fixed production overhead cost. Okay. So simply what you can do is you take the closing stock difference of 3000 and simply multiply this by the fixed production overhead cost which is 13,800. The profit difference is reflected here in the closing stock valuation. You understand? So likewise here the last year there is a difference of 69,400 under absorption costing and marginal costing profit is more so therefore absorption costing profit is less by 2760 so what is the reason for this what is the reason so in this case you take the uh, the stock differences so 2008 2009 you had a opening stock of 3000 and you had a closing stock of 2400 so closing stock reduced okay so we had 3000 opening stock closing stock 2400 so stocks reduced by 600 okay stocks reduced by 600 that 600 simply you multiply by the fixed production overhead cost 4.6 so that will give you the answer for the difference okay so this is the answer for the question number three, part three. I hope this is very clear. If you don't understand, please comment below and I will try to explain it to you uh, if there is any difficult part in this question. Okay. So with that, I will conclude the discussion about absorption costing and marginal costing so if you have any further questions if you have any further difficulties so what you can do is please comment below and based on your questions the difficult questions what I will do is I will prepare another video separate video explaining those questions or the difficult parts Okay, so that's it for today. I will see you soon with another video. And if you like the video, please subscribe the channel. Please subscribe the channel. And uh, you can click the bell button to receive a notification whenever I post a new video. And that's it for today. So. Thanks for watching and uh, I'll see you soon with another video. Bye.